All right, so I know this shirt is not appropriate for now because, <coughs> hold on, <coughs> coughing. <sighs> Coffee's pretty good. But anyway, this is for Halloween, right? I'm here for the booze. I know it's not Halloween, but I like the shirt and it's all good. Um, let's see. So, let's see here. Let me pause the video because I have this Ask Her Shinoe and I want to check up on some things before I make a comment because the topic someone is asking me about, I have watched this person before, but there are certain things that they're asking in this question and I want to be a little bit more informed. So hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. I listened to probably about five or six videos in order to... Uh, make sure that I was accurate, right? So this person in this Ask Hirsch Noe uh, said, hey Hirsch, uh, want to know what your opinions are about um, specific YouTubers. Now they mentioned a few, and I'm not gonna talk about the others because um, they're just not that important and I'll go into reasons why. And this is not to shame anybody or to be mean, but they said, what are your thoughts about these YouTubers they mentioned and also a YouTuber by the name of Kevin Samuels? Um, he gives commentary or comments to people who call in and gives his advice on dating. Uh, and he speaks about high valued men and the problems that women have in terms of trying to get these types of men. What are your thoughts about him? Do you think it's true? Et cetera, et cetera. Now, it might surprise you, maybe not, but I've actually got this question about Mr. Samuels before by someone a little bit ago. And just like the SYSBM uh, questions and other stuff, I don't like doing videos on things that people will say is chasing, is clout chasing, because that's not what this channel is about. Um, and I really, YouTube's not my, um, main source of income, right? It's not at all. But I've gotten this question about Kevin Samuels before, and there are some people who don't like him. Because I've listened to a few of his videos prior, just every now and again. I'm even a, I'm not a subscriber, but I should be. Thought I was. Um, but Kevin Samuels is a black gentleman who has a, a YouTube channel, has other businesses, I assume. I don't know the details about him specifically, but just in terms of his channel, he gives relationship advice, right? Um, and he pretty much tells it how it is. And some people don't like the, the very direct way that he speaks. But I can appreciate that because he's not doing it as a talking down to you. Like there's a female YouTuber who a lot of who's notorious for doing that about black men. He's not talking down to you and he's not speaking from emotion or speaking from um, whatever. He's speaking facts. Now, whether or not people want to listen to that is up to them. You may not agree with 100% of what he says, and I don't think that anyone necessarily agrees with 100% of what anyone says. But a lot of what he has said rings very, very true. And to me, it, it, now you have some people who go on the attack mode, right? This is mainly, his, his channel is mainly geared towards really all relationship advice for somewhat all women, but mainly specifically black women because there has, there's all these stereotypes. Oh, 
And while I was at the store, she's getting bee balm and other plants because it's hot out. And I was out there earlier. But anyway. Um, but there's all these stereotypes of what some black women think that black men feel about them or how black men think or how black men are, or how black men are this and that or what they should be. And there are many others who don't think that way. There are, most black women are normal, everyday, regular folk. Most. But you have some who fit the, the category that have been damaged so bad by whatever has happened in their life that they want to accuse and label all black men as nothing, right? And because they chose poorly and they didn't make good proper decisions or maybe they didn't have a good foundation to, to have to make good proper decisions, they want to blame every black man for every wrong that has been done in their life, whether it be that their father abandoned the family, whether it be that their father had 40 different kids by, you know, 18 different women or whether it was because a guy that they chose that you could tell is no good set them up or done them dirty or had a bunch of kids by them or whatever the case may be, that that is how all black men are. And when you find a black dude that has success, mainly a lot of times you hear of famous people, they try to shame them by saying that this famous guy, this famous black dude is going with a Becky or going with whatever. None of those shaming tactics work. It doesn't work. If you notice, you don't see a lot of shaming tactics towards black women from any other group of people, <clears throat> even including black men. There are some that do, but there's not platforms of where this is just a constant drumbeat day in and day out, day in and day out like that. You just don't really see that. And I think a lot of times people just, most folks don't care. Now you do have bigoted, Folks who are, and people will say, I can't be a bigot. Anyone can be a bigot, first off. You do have some bigoted black folks who are against interracial relationships. Why? They basically, environmental reasons, way, the way that they were brought up, lack of exposure, a lot of different things, right? There are some black folks that would never date someone of another race, but I don't have no issue with someone who does. There's a lot of them like that. But you do have some black men and black women who get very butthurt over the fact of black men, especially marrying and dating someone of another race. And the reason why people don't like Kevin Samuels is because of the simple fact that he speaks the truth. Like, I don't know how else to slice it. Like, it's not like it's not, he's not speaking facts. He's speaking truth. And you have people who try to make up rumors about him and what they think his life is like and all this other stuff. And it's just, it's comical because they're mad at the fact that he's speaking the truth. If you don't like the message, there's a couple of things you can do. A, you don't have to listen to it. B, you could think really carefully about these things and say, you know what, maybe that's how I am. One of the reasons why I specifically talk to young black men and people who are non-black may find that this video is not necessarily for them, but it's intended for everybody. But because every community has their dysfunctions, white people have massive dysfunctions. You have a YouTuber, the same one I was talking about, who's a black female who tends to believe and pretend that white men treat white women like gold and they treat black women like gold. They treat everybody, every race of women like gold, but black men are a failure. And a lot of this is just propaganda. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. So anyhow, um, it, it there's this function in all different communities. And the reason why you have some people who, there, there's a couple of different folks. There, to me, there's this term called swirlers. And to me, a swirler is a person who only dates white men and they trash men in their own group. And they even get the men, the white men that they're dating to co-sign that and also talk trash. I've seen it in with some Asian women. I've seen it with some black women. 
That's what I would term as a person who is a swirler, someone who dates or marries interracially. I don't think that's necessarily, I don't think that's what swirler was intended for. But to me, it's more or less a person that trashes their own because they've chose bad or because they have self wrong or bad self-esteem or whatever the case may be. And one of the reasons why I teach our girls to love and value and respect themselves is so that they don't look at other people and feel like that's what beauty looks like or what beauty should be or any of that, that you are beautiful the way that you are. Now, unfortunately, some people did not get that type of emotional support, love, and care as they were coming up. Some people got that love and support and basically it, it didn't matter because as they got older, they felt some type of way because maybe their environment, maybe because of what they saw on the news or what have you. But you do have, and I mentioned this in a video I did about some of these black dudes who are in the Facebook groups and they were talking about how, you know, none of the women in those Facebook groups are, you know, like none of them talk to me. It's the sense of entitlement that you have some people that feel like they're entitled just because they pop up in a situation that they're entitled to be with whoever that they choose. And they're never choosing their equal. These black dudes in the in the some of those some of the black dudes in those Asian groups on Facebook are not trying to go after their equal. They're going after someone who looks like a Jenny Mai, but they don't. I talked, I did a video about that. I don't know when it's gonna go up, but I did a video about that. And they expect that just because they check a box. And that, and because there are these Asian women that are seeking black dude, that just because they're black dude, well, then automatically you should go for me, right? And that's just that you're showing up with just the bare minimum. And what Cam Kevin Samuels does, and I'm not trying to speak for him, because there's more to it than than I'm very simplifying it, but it's pretty much say the same thing. Your your expectation is greater than what you're producing yourself. Your expectations don't match what it is that you provide. So he's talking a lot of times about high-valued men, men making over $120,000 or $100,000 and greater, and that there are a lot of women who want that, right? Because in the video I talked about where someone was asking about something and I was mentioning the you know, the, the chat rooms or the whatever, the groups in Facebook. And I was talking about how, you know, people have this expectation that just because, you know, I'm, I'm in the U.S., everybody wants to come here and everybody wants to be with me and all of that. And I said that it depends on a lot of different factors. There's some women who are in Korea and Japan and other places like that where you got to bring something to the table. Not saying in other groups you don't, but when you're in Korea, do you really want to move to the U.S.? <laughs> if you're in Japan, do you really want to move to Japan? There are some women who are, many women in, in the Philippines who are like, nah, I'd rather you move here. Or Thailand, I'd rather you move here. I don't want to move to the U.S., right? And so the question is, what do you bring to the table? As a dude, what do you bring to the table? Some of these women are professionals, some of them are doctors, nurses, own their own businesses, a lot of things. And what have you done other than being born in the U.S.? And some of these dudes don't even have a passport. So what do you bring to the table? And what Mr. Samuels does is reverse that and tell black women, what do you bring to the table? And this isn't for black women who are accomplished, married, and doing the things that they are supposed to do, need to do that type of thing. He's talking about the ones who have these high expectations and you have some that are attractive, very pretty, but they think that that's enough to land a guy that is pulling down a hundred thousand or greater a year. They think that that's enough, that I, I'm pretty. So, you know, and the, and 
the thing for me is it's not so much about outer appearance. It's about your whole everything. My mama used to call it your constitution. The way you carry yourself, how you are as a person, the way that you act, the way that you view people, the way that you act in public, the way you act behind door, closed doors, the way that you act in social set settings, right? And so certain, some men, especially men who really uh, are, are, are about good character, want someone who is that. Because again, as I did in that video, which parallels a lot with this one, looks fade. You can look like a supermodel and still in 10, 15 years, not so much look like that. It's not about the looks. It's about your character. And if you are part of the women who and white supremacists who go to this one particular female YouTubers page and you're in the comments, you're not the type of woman that most men want. Because it, they, a lot of guys don't want the toxicness. Now, you have opportunists in every situation who are looking for an easy, you know, they're out there hunting and they're looking for an easy target. And so they're going to sit there and co-sign everything you say, even if they disagree with it. They'll sit there and talk everything that you say, all your talking points that they'll agree with because they, they're looking for clout in a different area. They're looking for clout in terms of who they can get with. And then they're going to leave because they are the same individuals who know they, they have a degree almost in knowing the, 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 the talking points. Why? Because all these talking points that some of these women are talking about and trying to label all black men, these men fit. <laughs> so it's 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 they they these opportunistic type dudes understand that language they understand the stupidity and so they know how to work their way into a situation with women who subscribe to that and then when you have dudes that are told well i don't need a man i did a video asking that a long time ago right and honestly, there are a lot of men or a lot of women who are very well accomplished and they don't necessarily need a man to take care of them, but they want to be with a man and they want to be able to share their life with them and not bring up what their achievements and accomplishments are. One of the things that I don't, that's a big turnoff to me is if someone says that they're strong, I'm a strong such and such. I'm a strong black man. I'm a strong black woman. I'm a strong woman. I'm not interested in that. And it doesn't matter about race. If any person says that, then that usually signals to me that you're opposite of that. Right? It usually, when someone talks about what they are so much, and there's no evidence at all to kind of prove any of that, then usually it's a dream that they wish that they were, but they're not. And they think that somehow that that elevation of themselves is going to impress other people. And it just doesn't. If you have to talk yourself up and talk down to other people or a big platform or a group of people, then it really highlights your weakness. It highlights your own insecurities, which are massive. And you have some people who believe in the brainwashing. And these people are setting you up. A lot of times those folks, especially on YouTube, are doing it. And I've said this before, they're doing it for money. It's a money game for them. They have no real talent. So this it's easy to get on YouTube and say inflammatory things because it is just, it feeds the, the, the people that need leadership. They need someone to lead them and to, to co-sign their beliefs. One of the reasons why I don't talk about um, you know, politics is because sometimes people need validation. They have their own set of beliefs and they want that validation, right? It's just like cults. Cults exist and they work well because someone validates something within that person and they, they just keep gravitating to that. 
So when you have someone who's a true leader, they don't have to say, I'm a leader. If you looked at all the people in history who were actually leaders, whether they were good or bad, they never said, I'm a leader. They just did it. And it's the same thing when someone says, I'm strong. If you're strong, then you just do it. You are. People see it. They don't have to be told that you are. And so that to me is a telltale sign. And a lot of dudes who have experienced a lot of things, seen a lot of things, accomplished a lot of things, will know, spot that weakness early on and stay clear of it because there's a lot of things. When I go on dates, and this is what I told Noelle about something else that was completely different, but when I used to go on dates, I sat there and analyzed every single thing that took place. So it could be a conversation about whatever, but I would sit there and analyze every single thing that that person did. I didn't care what they looked like or what the conversation was about at that moment. I analyzed their body language, how they were sitting, the way that they acted, uh, how they ate, uh, <laughs> everything. I looked at everything. Then I would look at or listen to what they had to say and just kind of were they really about themselves? All of that. Then if if I knew that they were on social media or, you know, that I had met them because of social media or something like that, I would look at their social media stuff. Why? Because there's so many things. It's kind of like when you're in your car, that's your true self. When you step out of your car, you're not being your true self, right? People can travel no matter where they are in their car. That's who you're dealing with. That's their real self. They step out of that car and they're putting on a facade, typically, right? So for me, social media is someone's true self. So let me see who you truly are because everything else can just be fool's gold. And so someone like Kevin Samuels is like, I. he sees fool's gold. He knows when there's some fool's gold there. And you have some people who, some of these people, and some people say, well, he's just bash women. I disagree with that. I think what it is is he's speaking truth because he also goes in and there's other videos I've seen where he talks about he's not talking to the women that need the help. <laughs> there's a lot of women that don't even need the help. There's not a lot of women that fit this. They're like, yeah, that makes sense. But the reason why he's so successful and he has almost 700,000 subscribers is because of the simple fact that obviously something hits, something makes sense. Now, some people are saying, well, his subs are falling a little bit and his popularity's falling a little bit. I mean, still, you're, I mean, when you're cranking 700,000 subscribers and you're getting several hundred, if not thousands a day, losing a percent here or there is not that big of a deal. Because on YouTube, things ebb and flow. Popularity, people ebb and flow, typically, right? But... He talks about various different things. And he also talks about interracial relationships because you have some black folks and some black dudes too who want to sit here and talk negative about it. Yet, even though they probably even have done it themselves. And he talks about how when specifically with black dudes, if they're dating someone for whatever reason, whatever race that they are, and these are successful guys, they own their own business. They're doing a lot of good things. They're, you know, they're a good person to begin with. Because here's the other thing, and he mentions this too in, at different points in time in different videos. You could have a lot of businesses and be successful and have money and still be trash. You could be very wealthy and have a lot of businesses, a lot of everything, and still be trash. There's a lot of famous people that fit that bill. That that's not what it's that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about you being a good overall person. You basically are successful. You know, you've achieved a lot of different things, you know, that type of thing. That's kind of what he's talking about. And the problem is, is that when I was in college, <clears throat> I remember this. There were a lot of black women who weren't even checking that in my community, didn't check it. Uh, it. The folks that I went to high school with, there was a chick that I remember that I really and truly thought was very attractive, was interested in her. 
Nope. She was interested in a guy that was already kind of a problem in school. He just he just was. He he tried to bully people. He just he was just a uh, just an idiot. And that's who she wanted to spend her time with. Right? So after high school, I've lost track of this person. I went to I went to college. And really and truly, the only people who gave me the time of day in college were typically people who were also in college, and most of them were white. These are facts. Then, as towards my end of my college years, was when I met my first wife, who happened to be from Hong Kong. Then, after college and all that, and after the divorce, it was... And prior to that, prior to uh, college, in, in that time frame before you go to college and you graduated high school and before you go to college, you have a job. I had dated a couple of black women, but it wasn't it wasn't like it was a, a, a big, serious thing. So it's not like I didn't didn't date any black women. I did. But once I started to go to college, there were really none that were looking in my direction at all. Even after I got out of college, landed a good job. Nope. And so it it, it is what it is. The, 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 during my struggle period, even if I put myself out there, nobody was really looking in terms of black women. They were just not. I mean, these are solid facts. Some people will say, well, it's your fault. No, I put everything out there. Maybe I wasn't the best person in the world, but nope. And so you 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 see that. You can go into mostly black clubs. Nope. Now the dude that comes in looking like Tupac. <laughs> and even dudes who are not about that life will dress up like a Tupac because they know that that's just basically bait in the water. Now that's not saying all black women are that way, but there's, there's a segment. The vast majority of black women who are not like that, who are into the nerdy college guy, were already taken. <laughs> right? Or they're about to be, or they're dating someone or something. Like, it, there's a segment where that doesn't fit. You do have those that were just only interested in one type of dude. Then you have others who were accomplished, went to college, did a lot of different things, but... They're looking for a guy who's fresh out of college making 100 grand a year. You need to be on my level. You need to be doing more than me. And that's like, that's impossible. There's not even white dudes, Asian dudes, Hispanic dudes doing that in both numbers. It's just, it's impossible. And like I mentioned to the black dudes who are looking for these Asian women, it's like, why are you looking for Asian women to begin with? But B, you're looking for a build a chick. You have a lot of women who are looking for a build a dude. They have these expectations, these grandiose delusions of what they expect the guy to be. And he's got to be this and this and this and this and this and this. But then when you look at them, it's like, but you're not. You're not. Like, there's nothing about you that is, is heading in that direction. I use the example of Paula Patton and um, Robin Thicke in, when that video I was talking about. They're equals. Paula Patton, bad. Okay. Robin Thicke's a decent looking guy, good looking guy, whatever. They both are accomplished. Now, you can argue about maybe Paula Patton's not the best actress in the world, or, you know, maybe Robin Thicke's music is not the best in the world, whatever. But they are equally accomplished. There's, there's equality all along that realm. It's not like he's busted and ugly. They're, 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 they're equal, similar ages, all of that. That makes sense. Now, they didn't work out. That was mainly his own stupidity, because Paula Patton. But anyway, besides the point, that's different. But if if you find a guy that is it's it's very unbalanced, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And so you have some people who are not, and this Kevin Samuels tells women, based on your picture, you're not that attractive, you're overweight, but yet you want someone who is like the rock. You want The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. You want someone like Dwayne Johnson, but you're not 
you know, and you, and let's say the woman's an account, I'm an accountant, I'm a this, I'm a that. Okay. But there are many other people who are an accountant or who are CEOs who are in good shape and they are attractive. Why should this guy choose you and not choose that other person? These are facts. And some people don't like that. And so to answer your question, what are my thoughts about him? I think that he speaks the truth. And there are people who don't like that, can't handle that. And they're upset about it. Right? You have some people who are upset with maybe the 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 the, the approach. He's just straight and direct. Okay. But don't let that take away from the message. Because the message is what you should be paying attention to. And there are some people who do. There are a lot of black women in here who, in this, in this, on his channel, they're like, okay, this, I don't want to be in this situation. I, you know, and there's some who are like, you know, like, what is it? Most of the time, with men and with women who are in their 30s or 40s or whatever, and they haven't had a long-term relationship, a lot of that has to do with yourself. It's looking at yourself. If I never changed who I was, I'd still I'd be one of those people too. I'd be one of those people like, dang man, I ain't got nobody. Because a lot of that is you. You are the problem. It's not the other people. It's you. And to that one YouTuber who is more popular than I am, but not that not that great, uh, who bashes black men consistently and constantly, the problem is her not black men as a totality it's her and so the reason why it falls flat is because other women look at this and say ew other black women other races women they, some of them who can really think for themselves look at this and say ew and there's a lot of black dudes that are like well if you know i don't want to go where i'm not even tolerated <laughs> forget being celebrated i'm not even tolerated so they go someplace else and you have some people who will defend that and that's their prerogative. they can defend this person or defend what they're saying or say you're missing it or they're talking about you or you're this or you're that that's fine but if you have to resort to high school tactics and words and wording and dusty this and all of that then that shows your maturity level this gentleman here is well-dressed well-spoken I'm sorry. He's as natural as can be. And so he speaks facts. May not agree with everything, but speaks facts. And so that is the reason why his channel is the way that it is in terms of the number of subscribers. That's the reason why his, when he does a live and his, you know, the money that he makes on the side of people chipping in, it's why that is what it is. Because he speaks with what a lot of dudes who are in the percentage that he's talking about want to say. And to be honest with you, dudes who are super wealthy, because I'm not one of them, but dudes who are super wealthy aren't going to take the time to sit and explain why they don't want to be with you. They don't have to. Right? The dudes that are doing decent, like I consider myself doing a I aren't going to sit there and explain that either. I'm not going to sit and have to explain why I don't have to explain myself, right? It's just like with a job. If I'm working for a place and things don't work out, fine. It, I have so many different revenue streams that if I quit something or leave something, it doesn't impact me, right? Because I learned a long time ago, you can't trust a lot of employers. So I've, I've learned to fix that. And so I don't have to sit there and take crap. And so for a, a, a person who, and he talks about high valued men, he's talking about men that make a certain type of money, but also their characteristic, who they are as a person. They're not going to sit there and try to play high school games and talk about and name calling. It's just like, well, whatever. I'm not going to waste my time. It's just like when people go in the comments and they type in stupid stuff. I don't reply to it. Right? It's another wolf howling at the moon. If a wolf, if you can have 40, 50, 60,000 wolves howling at the moon, the moon's never going to say nothing back. It's too great for that. So that's kind of the situation with myself. 
that's the kind of situation with him and some others. They don't really care with what other some of these people are saying. If you can't handle the truth, you can't handle the truth. And so the way that he dissects his his show and the way that he talks about things, he's talking about specific characteristics of a person. He's not making general broad accusations across everybody. He's just saying the facts. He talks about how, you know, there are some women, some of them who may be white or Asian, whatever, who are looking for a good guy. And if that guy happens to end up to be black, then so be it. Then you have people who are upset. They're saying, well, all the good ones are gone. Well, because you have to, and you can be a guy that may not have been so great and end up being a great guy, right? I mean, if you look at Jeezy and Jenny Mai, like, that's an example. So there are examples of where things change, but you have to be with someone in their struggling point. Back when I was struggling is when I need for you to be with me, not whenever I'm sitting here doing really good, when I'm struggling, when I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to make things work and all this and barely able to feed the cat. That's when I need you with me, not whenever I'm, you know, owning a few different properties, owning a couple of businesses and doing that type of thing. I don't need you then. <laughs> I need you when I'm struggling. And I need for you to cheer and clap for me when I'm struggling. And there are a lot of black women who are that way. There are a lot of white women who aren't that way either, where they want you just popping. As soon as you, as soon as you reach 18, you gotta be popping. You have some that are like that. All There's all types of women like that, but for some reason in our community, it's really heavy handed. It. And I don't know quite why that is. Um, it just is. So that's my thoughts about it. Tell me what you think. Make sure you join the Discord down in the description box below. We talk about a lot of different things there, obviously. Mainly cryptocurrency has been the big conversation piece. I'm still on the fence on a lot of things. I was going to invest in that, and then I kind of pulled back. And so now I'm looking at other things within cryptocurrency. So that's one of those things where I have to educate myself a little more about. But anyhow, make sure you join the Discord down in the description box below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and comment. Until next time, I will see you. Take care.